to the 2018 season review for the Hurricanes. They finished fourth overall, uh, second in the New Zealand Conference behind the Crusaders. Good enough to be among those top teams, the final team to qualify for uh, a home a home playoff game, um, but unable to to kind of take it to that next level. It was an interesting season with two particularly interesting runs. Uh, but before I get to those, I'll just go through some of the good points of their season, just in terms of their stats and things that look good, uh, good players. Um, third in tackle busts for the Hurricanes, which is kind of to be expected given how many uh, offensive moves those guys pull off. Uh, fifth overall for average points per game. Fourth overall for tries. I'm a little bit surprised they're not higher, uh, but I guess New Zealand Conference teams perhaps sometimes when they go at each other are, are, are pretty tough. Uh, six for line breaks, fourth for pick and drive, which is a bit surprising. Uh, and in terms of defense, 14th for points conceded, which is excellent. Uh, 14th for tries conceded, kind of goes hand to hand. And 13th overall for errors, which is in contrast to what we saw with the Chiefs, who had overall better offensive stats than, um, than the Hurricanes. But their error rate, the Chiefs, was just astronomical compared to what the Hurricanes were doing. Uh, not everything is peachy, though. Uh, 10th overall in goal kicking. There's always a bit of spotlight on, uh, on old, um, not Geordie, Bodie, Bowden Barrett's uh, goal kicking. 74% for the team overall is not fantastic. Um, but I mean, if a goal kick is kicking at like 75%, that's kind of standard minimum without being good. Like you're not very good. You know, if you're below 75%, you're getting into kind of poor. But, um, you know, obviously you'd like a guy who's going to kick 80%, 75%, um, 74. Could be worse, but 10th overall. Uh, sixth for missed tackles, which is an interesting one. Uh, generally, you know, they're, they're, they're good at, at stopping teams scoring points, but there are times when they are falling off tackles. And another quite interesting one is they are the 13th team uh, at getting turnovers. I mean, you look at the other New Zealand teams, you've got Matt Todd at the Crusaders, you got Sam Kane at the Chiefs. Um, who's who's the guy at the Canes? I mean, you go Adi Savia, but he is not an out-and-out -out fetcher. And, I mean, in terms of All Blacks selection, you often see him kind of as a bench guy. He, he often starts behind Sam Kane. They, they do seem to prefer that kind of genuine fetcher. So, I mean, they've got Evans at the Hurricanes. Perhaps he is a man going forward who can kind of you know, fill that role, but um, yeah, it does seem to be an area where they could improve. I mean, in terms of good players, though, you got Ben Lamb, who was the number one try scorer of the comp. That's it. You know, he had 16 tries. He's the out-and-out -out number one try scorer, and they didn't even have an extra game that the Lions and the Crusaders had, so excellent effort from him, especially at the first half of the season. Uh, Laomapi was the sixth overall for tackle busts. He's a tank. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot going forward offensively. And as the team, their system seem to reduce how the team's scoring points. So, plenty to look look at and say that that's cool. Um, some of their highlights for the season. I mean, the obvious thing to me was that 10-game run where they, where they won every game. They, they lost their first game uh, over in Pretoria to the Bulls, which was a real shock to the system. But then from week 3 to week 14, 10-game winning streak, they didn't lose... A uh, single game, there were some close ones, but um, that included a win over the Crusaders. They were one of only two teams to beat the Crusaders this year. That was 29-19 in Wellington. They beat the Rebels uh, 50 points to 19 over in Melbourne. You say, well, as the Rebels, Rebels didn't even make the playoffs. But at that point, the Rebels were one of the other kind of high-flying teams who had also only lost one game at that point. And the Hurricanes just went over and just smacked them. Um, and also they showed some metal to kind of keep that run going with a win over the Sharks, 38-37 in Napier. They were behind in that game for pretty much the entire game from memory, and they were certainly behind as the clock was, was running out. The Hurricanes were way down at the other end of the field. They managed somehow to get up the other end and score, and it took a penalty, not a penalty, a conversion from Ehi West to, to seal the deal. They managed to get it done. So that showed some kind of particular fortitude in, in terms of mental fortitude and, um, yeah, just willingness to keep fighting for them to, to pick up that win when they really had no rights to win that game. Um, but, you know, good on them. 
Uh, low lights in there are a few towards the tail end of the season when that 10 game streak kind of came to an end they went on a bit of a losing streak and it's only three games but when you're not that far from the playoffs that really just seemed to put them off kind of off kilter they were never the same team after they had that 10 game run they lost to the crusaders 24 13 in canterbury they lost to the highlanders 30 points to 14 uh, and they lost to the Brumbies over in Canberra, 24 points to 12. So, yeah, it was kind of a, a wrong time to be to be on the down. You know, you want to be peaking kind of like the Crusaders, just tail end of the season, second half of the season, pretty much look flawless, whereas the, the Hurricanes were kind of on the way down. Uh, apologies, I don't have a Hurricanes jersey. I forgot to mention this is the closest colors I've got. But, um, yeah, they, they did have a funny thing with their jersey this year where they kept wearing their away jersey at home which was um which was grinding my gears a little bit i am um finicky with that kind of thing anyway another low light was the semi-final 30 points to 12 uh against the crusaders down at christchurch they never looked like winning it it was the crusaders all day long uh definitely a low light so um you kind of thought the crew the, the hurricanes are going to use their backs they're gonna think of something some kind of out of the box way of, of really troubling the Crusaders and it just never really happened. Crusaders were pretty much just on song that whole game. So yeah, um, it's going to be an interesting one to see how they go looking into next season. They have got a few guys leaving. Uh, I mean, obviously the coach, Chris Boyd, he's leaving after a pretty successful tenure as, uh, as Hurricanes coach. It's probably the most uh, successful era of, of Hurricanes performances that I can remember. Uh, obviously they got a title and pretty much made the playoffs every year so yeah kudos to all the work he's been done he'll be missed uh julian savia a hurricanes kind of stalwart is leaving after being a try machine for these guys for so long but um you'd have to say he doesn't look like the player he was kind of a few years ago so perhaps it's good timing for everybody ehi west he was always going to be back up to bowden so he's leaving uh blade thompson very capable back rower is leaving very good in the lineup brad shields another one now playing for england he's leaving and michael fatty Alofa, one of their kind of key locks uh is on his way out but in saying that there's a lot of guys signed up for next year and it's interesting that a lot of them signed up after john plumtree who was the coach for next year after he was confirmed as coach so he's been the assistant to chris boyd uh, he's going to get the top job from next year and these guys signed on knowing that so they must have a pretty good relationship with him they're confident in what he's doing otherwise they might have explored their options so uh, you look at guys staying next year toby smith uh you know former international prop solid that's a bit concerning he's the only prop along with um uh, fidel who's uh, signed up for next year and that guy only played one game for like 20 odd minutes so yeah, they'll need to sign some of their props up to contracts from what I've read. Uh, but you got Coles, Riccatelli, two very class hookers if Coles can, can stay fit or get fit because he didn't play this year. Uh, Lousy is says they're going to be their main lock. They probably do need some tall timber in. But uh, you got Evans, Fafita, Kenwood, Princep, and Adi Savia. So you've certainly got a lot of good, uh, you've got a lot of good back rows there despite the fact that um, Shields and Thompson are going. Uh, TJ Perinara is still going to be there. Bowden Barrett is still going to be there. They're amazing. Well, their relationship is amazing given how many games they have played together. So they know each other inside and out. Uh, Jackson Garter Bishop is going to be the backup number 10. That's fine. He is uh, the number one guy for Wellington in the United 10 Cup. So that's fine. you got Aso, Lomapi, and Proctor. So these guys in the midfield or perhaps uh, out wide. Very good players. you got Husson, Lamb, Nihi Munaskara, Jordi Barrett. There's going to be a ton of talent in this Hurricanes team next year. You look at that lineup and probably think that they could use some forward signings more than backs. Um, yeah, the scrum um, has been, I don't know, questioned at times uh, during the season. So how they can operate at scrum time is going to be an interesting one. Uh, whether they can sign a lock or whether they bring some guy through the ranks. Perhaps we've got to keep our eyes on the Mighty 10 Cup for that. Who's the next big thing with the Hurricanes at uh, in the second row? But, I mean, overall, if you're a Hurricanes fan, you look at all those guys signed for next year, despite the guys going, um, you know, it doesn't seem it doesn't seem like abandoned ship. It still looks like kind of pretty happy days. But, yeah, you guys let me know how you thought the, the season went for the Hurricanes. Like I said, it was a pretty good... Uh, 
it was a pretty good season except for um the tail end that kind of went wrong at the wrong time but um imagine if they can get a 10 game run kind of going into the tail end of next season it could be something to watch but yeah you guys let me know your thoughts uh, on the Kane season and um yeah i'll talk to you soon see you later